Hey, how's it going? Gabriel came here, and I'm in the midst of writing my next book, which is all about fat burning. It's about turning your, helping kind of reset your body and turn you into a 24/7 fat burning machine, and uh, it's profoundly awesome. If you've read my all-day energy diets, which is a New York Times bestseller, you're gonna love this one even more. I've been doing a lot of, <laughs> spent a lot of time writing this so far, a lot of research, and there's a lot of great stuff in this book to help you burn fat and lose up to five pounds a week in just 21 days. So it's a pretty cool promise, and we've helped hundreds of people already go through this program even before the book is launched, and we've got a lot of proof in the pudding. So anyways, today I wanna to talk about, I'm gonna, over the next couple months, I'm gonna be kind of releasing some videos like this where I wanna talk about some concepts in the book that I think are really gonna serve you well. So one of the concepts I wanna talk about today is I have a whole chapter on why we're fat, right? What is triggering us to become fatter? Right? If we look at where we were 100 years ago, well, it's where, you know, if you look at a picture from 100 years ago, a crowd, for instance, uh, you're not gonna see too many overweight people. Nowadays, you take a picture from a stadium, like a football game, and you're gonna see um, you know, two out of three people being overweight or obese. So stuff is happening in our worlds that is making us fat. Now, first thing, the first thing I wanna uh, just let you know of is that for the most part, it's not your fault. Okay, unless you're sitting on the couch doing absolutely nothing and eating potato chips, in which case you should definitely take responsibility for that. But for the most part, in most people's lives, there are things that are outside of your control that are forcing you or forcing your body to hold on to weights. And in this video, I wanna share one such food, which um, you've probably heard of before as being, uh, as being bad for your health, but I want to tell you why and give you a couple distinctions. So today we're going to be talking about a fat trigger called sugar. Now you're like, oh God, okay, here we go again, sugar, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, stick with me for a second because sugar is really much deadlier than you, may, you might be aware of. So when we look at the sugar molecule, okay, well, and when I talk about sugar, I'm talking about sugar that you might see as defined as sugar on the back of a food label or table sugar or high fructose corn syrup, okay? These are all like the real kind of culprits uh, when it comes to sugar. And the problem with sugar is that it's not just glucose. And if it were, you know, we probably wouldn't have the issues that we're having. So sugar is half glucose, half fructose. And glucose is the form of sugar, the simple carbohydrate, that our body loves to use at the cellular level for producing energy. Our cells can only use glucose. They cannot use fructose. So fructose must go through the liver and be converted into glucose before it can be used at all in the body. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second that that's a problem. But let's talk about glucose for a second. You may have heard of blood sugar, right? When you eat something, your blood sugar goes up. That is what glucose does. So glucose impacts your blood sugar. And that's why having too many foods that are high in glucose or have a higher glycemic index, meaning that they spike your blood sugar very quickly because they're digested very quickly, is not a good idea. So these, these things would be like, you know, breads, uh, cereals, bagels, muffins, these are all refined carbohydrates that are very quickly digested. And then because they're predominantly glucose, you know, the, 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 the starch in them is broken down into glucose. Think of a, a bushel of grapes and each one of those grapes being a molecule of glucose. That's what happens when you break down those carbohydrates. Those glucose molecules then surge into your bloodstream and your blood sugar goes up. So what, your, what does your body do? Your body then secretes a hormone called insulin which is really a fat storage hormone. It's an anabolic storing hormone. So insulin is secreted into the blood, takes all that sugar, brings it into your muscle and liver. And that's okay, but there's only so much storage or glycogen that can be stored in your muscles and liver. After that, you have the spillover effect where all that extra glucose has to get stored as fat, okay? So focusing on more low glycemic carbohydrates like beans and legumes is a smart idea because you're not gonna get that surge in insulin and you're not gonna be getting all that stored very quickly, okay? Now that's, the, that's, that's just kind of half of the sugar story. And the problem is that most people, most doctors and most dietitians for, for the longest period of time, even till today, even the American Diabetic Association is still focusing exclusively on the glycemic index of foods. And that's a problem because we're, we're totally overlooking, uh, first of all, the glycemic load, which means that if you have a higher glycemic food, if you just add in some protein and fiber, we lower the glycemic load of that food, which means that if you have white bread, 
if you just kind of let's as an example sprinkled some flax seeds and had a piece of chicken on top of it right protein and fiber as obviously you wouldn't want to eat that it's probably not going to taste very good but the whole idea is that the protein and fiber is going to slow the release of sugar out of the stomach and that's that's going to slow or lower the glycemic load or the spike of blood sugar that results as a result of that so the problem is that the medical community and the, the dietary community for the most part is only focused on the glycemic index. Don't eat this food because it spikes your blood sugar. Boom. But they don't, they failed for the longest time until recently, last couple of years, to recognize the danger of fructose. And fructose is that other half of the sugar molecule. And fructose, as I mentioned, requires to go from the stomach into the liver first. It doesn't actually go to the bloodstream. It goes into the liver first and then the liver has to process it. So the liver converts, or should ideally convert fructose into glucose, and then it can shuttle it off to wherever. But the problem is that that is a rate dependent process. Basically what that means is that, use this as an example. Um, let's say you're a factory worker on, a, on, a, on a, an assembly line, okay? So you have the conveyor belt that's moving across, and you've got you know, a part that comes across, you put a screw in and it goes off to the next one. Now that's, that's fine, right? That's like fructose in small amounts going into your liver. Your liver was able to process some of it and it moves, moves through no problem. But the problem is that what happens when that conveyor belt increases in speed? You know, now the factory worker is like, oh my God, I can't keep up, I can't keep up. And you have all these parts that are flying off the conveyor belt and piling up. Well, that's exactly what happens inside your liver when you are consuming high amounts of fructose. And I'm not talking about copious amounts here. I'm talking about if you have a soda, you know, if you have a 591 milliliter bottle of Coke, that's about 70 grams of sugar. Half of that is fructose, 35 grams. And that is pretty much all it takes to really slow down your liver's ability to metabolize it. And here's the danger. On the conveyor belt scenario, those pieces, of, those parts that are flying off and piling up. Well, in your liver, those little kind of byproducts are called triglycerides and uric acid. Uric acid, we know, is a big culprit behind gout and even heart disease. Triglycerides are the worst form of, they're literally fat droplets that accumulate inside the liver, which can lead to non-alcoholic um, fatty liver disease, which is a big problem and we're seeing a lot of it now, especially with young kids, it's crazy. And second, those triglycerides can then get into the blood and really ruin things inside your bloodstream. Because we know that triglycerides are a uh, great danger, per, you know, perhaps even more so than some of the cholesterol that we're so worried about. So fructose, who would have thought that having sugar could be related to heart disease and getting fatter in this way, right? So these are some of the things that a lot of people are not aware of. And I want you to understand that, you know, one of the questions I've, I've answered very commonly, very, very often is, okay, you're, well, if, if fructose is a problem and fructose is uh, a, uh, you know, a main sugar in fruit, for instance, is fruit bad? The answer is no. And the reason for that is because when you have a whole fruit, like the apple, or you've blended it, it still has the fiber. So that's gonna slow the release of fructose. If you are juicing fruit, so you're putting things through a juicer, several apples, some melon, whatever else you want, thinking you're doing things kind of for the better of your health, the reality is that you might actually be doing a lot more harm because now you are getting liquid fructose right into your liver with no fiber to buffer it out, okay? So I hope you understand the importance of this because fructose has been related to insulin resistance, leptin resistance, which basically cuts off the communication to your brain telling, that you're, telling your brain that you're full, um, related to uric acid developments, triglycerides, heart disease, even cancer in some cases. So fructose is a very, very big problem. My good friend JJ Virgin has a terrific book called The Sugar Impact Diet where she talks about seven hidden sugars that not a lot of people are thinking about, right? We're the, we, we think of sugar as sugar and high fructose corn syrup, but there's all sorts of other hidden sugars in our foods that, um, that, are, that are pretty sneaky. So if you wanna read that book, it's awesome. But just in the meantime, just think about lowering your sugar intake in general. Right? Just you know, don't add sugar into your coffee. If you drink coffee, God forbid. Um, but if you are having sugar, it should be coming from whole foods like fruit that are still buffered by their fiber. Because as I talk about in my book, what's really important from a fat loss perspective when it comes to carbohydrates is the net carbohydrates. Total carbohydrates minus the fiber. So if you have a fruit that is 20 grams of, uh, of, of carbohydrate, but 15 of those are fiber, well, you're really only taking in five grams 
because the 15 grams of fiber is moving through your body. So anyways, I'll save that for another, another discussion, but for now, just realize that sugar consumption is a big problem. And the big reason that sugar consumption has increased in the past 75 years is due to things like the advent of glass bottling or refrigerated vending machines, or the fact that food companies discovered that high fructose corn syrup is a lot cheaper to use than cane sugar, for instance, so now it's pretty much in everything. So. I urge you, I strongly urge you to decrease your consumption of sugar. We are now consuming the amount, the equivalent um, of sugar that's found in one can of soda every seven hours. More than 100 years ago, we were consuming that same amount every five days. Okay, so things are, it's pretty scary. So when you look at why so many people are overweight, that's just one reason. There's a number of other fat triggers that I discussed in the book and I'll share a few more of them with you in some upcoming videos. But anyways, if you've enjoyed this, please share it with your friends. Let's get this message there to some more people. Let me know what you think below and be sure to join me over at my blog at yurielkame.com. Let me know your questions over there. Got some amazing stuff for you on the fitness and nutrition side to help you burn fat and feel awesome. So until the next video, Check it out, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you then.